Hello students, I hope all of you are doing well. We start our first lesson in this term. And today's topic is about defining a task. It's mostly related with algorithms. The objective of our lesson is to create a model of a given task before writing its computer program. As we learned C++ programming language in our previous term, so we continue writing a program in C++ in this term also. There are several steps in solving a task. The first one is defining a task. What do we mean by defining a task? In this step, we try to understand the whole scenario of a task in order to understand what is given, what is asked, and what to find. Then, in the next step, we analyze the task. Here, we try to find some suitable formulas or ways to solve the task. When we have known what to find, in the next step, which is called writing an algorithm, we write an algorithm for the given task. It can be written in diagrams, flowcharts, or in pseudocodes. Then, when algorithm is ready, we can start writing a program for the given task, or it's called developing a software. So, in the next step, we test it. It means like checking our program. It can be done by comparing the results of the program with the already known results. If they are same, so that means our program is correct or 100%. If it is partially same or if it is totally not correct, then the next step, which is means analyzing the result, we try to resolve the problem. It can be done like changing the codes in the given program. Then again, we can check it if it is 100% correct. Then in the last step, which is called software support, we can do changes on design of the program. So we try to make it user-friendly in this step. All these kinds of steps are used when we do a large project. Many IT companies follow similar steps for their software development. So today we try to understand the first step, which is called defining a task. In order to define a task, we need to answer these questions. What to find, what is given, and what can be used. Let's use this way of solving for the first task which is given in your book. The task is about bank or deposit. Let's answer these questions for the given task. What to find? The total money after n year. What is given? The initial money. Let's say S money. And year. For how many years? N year. And X percentage. What can be used? So we can use some formula related with deposit or bank. By using these answers, we can write the, this task, defining the task step. So we give name as deposit description. Here in description, we explain the name of the task. So here, deposit means to put money into a bank for some interest. Input, we put some initial money, n year, and percentage. Output. So the output, the answer for the, this question, what to find. We have written here total money after n year. So we write here also the same thing, the total money after n year. So to understand this task, let's write a small program. Before writing program, uh, let's understand what kind of formula we'll use. Suppose I'm going to put some money, 1000 thingy, for two years. And suppose the percentage is 30%. So in the first year, what will be my total money after one year? first year. So how do we calculate it? I think all of you are familiar with this way of calculation. Initial, we write initial money, add it to the percentage of that money. 30% means 30 divided by 100. So we can write shortly like this. This is equal to 1000 multiplied by 100. I'll get the same result if I do in this way. So what will be my output? 1300 thing after one year. So in the second year, my initial money will be this. This is my initial money for the second year. In the zeroth year, it was 1000 thing. After one year, it became this amount of money. And then in the initial of the second year, now my money is equal to this number. So instead of writing this long way, I'll write directly shorter way. 1300 multiplied by 30%. And you'll get this much money. So this is the my money which I will get after two years. So let's try to write a program for this. In C++, the first we call a library. Mostly it is iostream library. Include iostream and main. Inside the main, the first thing is we declare a variable, double, and first variable is s, the initial money, 
second is n years third is percentage which is equal to 1.3 next insert s initial money and then year then with the help of four cycle we calculate the formula so in i from zero year up to second year i plus plus s initial money multiplied by x then we give the output s so let's check it so initial money suppose this thousand tenge and then years two, for two years so i'm getting the same result as we discussed earlier okay so this is the one of the way of solving the given problem there can be several ways of solving the same task for example let me show you another way thousand tenge i am putting it into bank for two years for 30 percent so i can calculate it like this thousand tenge multiplied by percentage and write degree if i am putting it for two years here i write degree as two next so calculate it so 1000 this is equal to then i'll get the same result as we discussed earlier so let's write the proof so let's check that formula will it work correct or not we don't use cycle now instead of this we will use power so we have ready function called power which is responsible for power we write like this see out now to use this function power we need to call another library that library is called cmas cmas which is responsible for mathematical formulas okay let's check it something thousand thing for two years so i'm getting this same result as we discussed earlier so it is correct now let's continue so first we defined the task and in the second step we analyzed and found a shorter way of the formula and then we wrote a software so in your book you have these homeworks now i'll do it the first one here it is asked to find numbers which are divisible by three but not divisible by five so numbers between 20 and 50 so first of all you need to ask these questions and give answers what to find so integer numbers which are divisible by three but not by five what is given integer numbers between 20 and 50 so what can be used cycle if statement and logical operators after getting these answers you can write the first uh, defining the task so give the name so we can give name as numbers for this task description finding integer numbers which are divisible by three but not by five input what is input so initial and final number of a cycle okay so this 20 and 30 we can input it and uh, we'll get numbers which are divisible by three and but not by five let's write a program for that also i'll copy this part of code so i'll dec declare here parameters of cycle so i declare i it starts from 20 up to 50 i plus plus and then i need to check it whether that number is divisible by two or not and then whether that number is not divisible by five so how do we check so we use if statement if i is divisible by 3 divisible by 3 and operator logical operator and divisible by 3 but not by 5 so it will be written like this then give such numbers if they are available in this range so let's check it now and 
20. So I got this 21, 24, 27, 33, 36, 39, 42, 48 up to 50. So here I don't have 30. 30 is divisible by 3. However, it is divisible by 5 also. What is us? So it shouldn't be divisible by 5. So here 30 is divisible by 5. That's why we are not getting 30 here. So here are the numbers which are divisible by 3 but not divisible by 5. That's why we are getting these numbers only. Okay, this is the end of the lesson. Remaining one homework, you do it by yourself and send it to my WhatsApp and I will give you marks. So, see you in the next lesson. Goodbye for now.